spending time in nature, being active, is the best antidepressant I've ever tried. And like any medication, if you don't take that medication, you get side effects. For me, the biggest fear has always been to lose the ability to do what I love, to be in the mountains, to be outside, to be challenging myself, to be the best I can be. And then it happened. I'm Alex Stanniforth. I'm an adventurer, a motivational speaker, author, and the founder of a mental health charity called Mind Over Mountains. So I guess I had a really normal start in life. I was brought up near Chester, I had everything I needed. It all changed when I was about nine years old, when I had a mild form of epilepsy, which shattered my confidence. That was the catalyst for a whole host of challenges, like anxiety and panic attacks from a young age. Uh, I was bullied all the way through school, it was relentless. I hated sports, I mean, I was the kid that came last at sports day. And I've had a stammer all my life. You know, from a... Say that again. So I guess I went through school thinking I was never good enough, thinking I was a victim, and didn't realise that I had a choice. I discovered the outdoors on my first hill walk in the lakes when I was about 14, and that changed everything. That change of environment, that change of mindset was just overwhelming. It was, it was amazing. I finally found a way to fight back, to prove myself, to prove all the bullies wrong. I think at 14, you're, you're naive, you think you can take on the world. And at some point that day, I came up with the idea of climbing Everest, which seemed to be the ultimate challenge. I mean, that was the ultimate goal. That was the pinnacle. And at 14, I kind of decided that that was all I really wanted to achieve in life. But there was obviously lots of steps to, to make that a reality. So that meant trying all sorts of outdoor sports from running to rock climbing, to scuba diving, to paragliding, to mountain biking. I just wanted to find what could I overcome next. And in that time, there was lots of climbing in the Alps and Mont Blanc in the Himalayas, just getting the experience I needed. I never could have imagined that just four years after that initial hill walk in the lakes in, you know, in jeans and a Food Fighters t-shirt, that I'd be actually at Everest Base Camp on my first Everest expedition at 18 years old. Everest didn't go to plan. The first year there was a massive avalanche which sadly killed 16 climbing ships in the icefall. So we had to pack up and go home without stepping a single foot on the mountain. So I went back in 2015 and this time we were uh, on the mountain just below Camp 1 in the icefall when the earthquake hit Nepal. You hear this crack, the sound of ice breaking off the mountain and, and you know for the first time in my life I genuinely thought that's it, you know, game over. Any second now, it's, it's just gonna go black. We were trapped on the mountain at 6,000 meters for two days. You know, the route down to base camp had gone. We're told we could be there for, for a week. We got food for a day or two days at most. Not realizing that actually, we were in the safest place of all. We were just a, a tiny part in this disaster that had taken over 9,000 lives. Everest really felt like the end goal, but it was actually just the beginning. It was stupid to think that climbing Everest was going to be this miracle solution. Because climbing up the mountain, there's only one way back down again.
it wasn't going to solve anything. And I was never going to feel good enough for long enough. I was going to have to find something else to fill that gap. Climbing Everest wasn't going to fix my depression. It was just a distraction from the problem. So what if the solution wasn't climbing Everest anymore? What if it was helping other people to climb theirs? To give them some hope, to help them think differently about their challenges in life. And that goal was so vast that I may never truly reach the top. But maybe that way we can only keep getting higher and make the biggest contribution we can. I started Climb the UK, which involved climbing to the highest points of all 100 UK counties. 5,000 miles of cycling, walking, running and kayaking in about 72 days. I then focused on road running for a while. I, I wrote two books. Started a charity, Mind Over Mountains, which I guess has kind of become my legacy. For me, it's that combination of, of hill walking with professional mental health support, giving people that safe space just to walk and talk, to be outside in nature, with like-minded people, I feel is the most powerful tool that everybody should have access to. They come away with that mental shift, that hope that there's a way through whatever they're dealing with in life. And for me, that just makes the whole thing even more worthwhile. In 2020, I came up with probably my most ridiculous challenge yet. I decided to try and run the National Three Peaks, climbing Ben Nevis, Scarfell Pike and Snowdon, but running the entire distance between them, which is about 450 miles or 70 marathons in, in nine and a half days. Definitely the hardest challenge I'd ever, ever taken on. I was paranoid I was gonna fail. But when we raise the bar, we raise that baseline, we discover what's possible. And then there's that curiosity of, of what's next. Okay, there you go. So I always need to work towards something. I think it gives me that sense of purpose. We all need that reason to get out of bed in the morning. And as I had this, this real passion for ultra running, I, I set out to do my first 100 miler on the Lake Smears and Waters, which is a 105 mile route around the Lake District. After completing the Lake Smears and Waters, 32 hours of running with great friends in just an amazing part of the world, I caught COVID. For me, the biggest fear has always been to lose the ability to do what I love, to be in the mountains, to be outside, to be challenging myself, to be the best I can be. And then suddenly that nightmare became a reality. It happened. Ever since then, I've been on this pretty rubbish expedition with long COVID. And it has been the most challenging, arduous journey of my life. Like most athletes, I thought it was just gonna be a bit of a cold and I have to have a couple of weeks off. I'd ease myself back in, I'd be fine. You know, I was young, I was healthy, I was 26, so surely it was gonna be fine. But I realized quite quickly that after two weeks, you know, this wasn't gonna be the usual process. Every time I tried to return to training, no matter how careful I was, I just kept crashing. You know, your body overreacts to exercise, so you get a big flare of the symptoms. Headaches, a sore throat, a runny nose, palpitations, chest pain, insomnia. It's like having a chronic cold. This is gonna take more rest, more time off than I imagined. There was no time scale. There was no protocol. Nobody could say to me, right, do X, Y, Z, and you'll be back running again. It could have been months, it could have been years. And that was terrifying. Your community, your network is, is built around this sport and this identity. And everybody else is kind of going around as usual, and yet you're kind of on your own. And you're from the outside looking through the glass but you can't touch it, you can't do it. So you feel left behind. After months and months of this and this lack of progress, I was kind of seeing all those milestones and races and goals like slip away. Spending time in nature, being active is the best antidepressant I've ever tried. And like any medication, if you don't take that medication, you get side effects. I quickly realized I needed to do something. I couldn't just sit here and wait. You can't waste a good crisis. 
Whilst I couldn't run, I had to find the opportunity. I've always been terrified of open water. So I decided to set myself a challenge of swimming in open water every day for 30 days in a row. Not really a challenge by my usual standards, but I think the challenge often is just about finding something that meets us where we are. Being out in the water, for me, was about being in the moment. Rather than waiting for the future, how can I make the current moment okay? How can I take ownership of this and just find joy in the present, you know, rather than kind of casting it into the future? In the lakes, in the water, I just found this sense of calm, this gratitude, this hope. It gave me something to look forward to every day. The lakes has something for everybody, and I'd never seen it from that perspective before. So it was like a whole new world, and that was exciting, there was possibility. The water literally saved me through that whole summer. The problem was when it came to winter. As the water got colder and the dark nights came in, I just couldn't get myself into the water anymore. The colder water was actually starting to exhaust me more. It was making the fatigue a lot worse. And then because you lose that support, you then lose that community of people. So you feel even more isolated. I was sinking it into depression again. Early January 2023, I saw the cardiologist and it was another blank stare, basically saying, you may never get back to where you were again. That wasn't an option. So I had to really defy logic. I had to defy the unknown and just to commit myself to something bigger. I had this idea of a comeback challenge. To swim and run together made perfect sense. That was the perfect comeback, especially when swimming has literally kept my head above water for the last year. So then I heard about the Frog Graham Round, which is a classic swim run challenge here in the lakes. 40 miles of running uh, with two miles of swimming across four lakes. I, I just realized I, I had to do this. You kind of have to go against medical logic. Life is too short to wait for things to, to improve. But in the early days, that was literally running 30 seconds at a time, from 105 miles to 30 seconds. Any more than that, my body would just shut down. I've had to train myself to run all over again. So for me, the Frog Graham is about bringing the old and the new together, being able to be back in my happy place with people around me, with that community and just never taking that ability granted again. The Frog Graham has been a lifeline, it's been a comeback challenge, and if you're gonna make a comeback, you may as well do it properly. So that's all my kit packed, ready for the frog rain round tomorrow. Um, hopefully that's enough kit to get me around 40 miles of running uh, to 18 summits of 15,000 feet of ascent and swimming across four lakes and two miles in the process. Um, environmentally, it's really important that you wash and rinse any swim gear when you're moving in between the lakes just to avoid the spread of invasive species. And that's something else to bear in mind. Hopefully I've got strong legs, strong mind, and all I need now is a bit of good luck. I'll see you all bright and early in the morning. You never feel quite ready for something like this. It's um, ironic for a mental health charity, man. It is sky high right now. Um, but yeah, this is uh, see what happens. I don't know how my body's going to cope, but that's where the adventure begins. So let's just uh, get out there, see what happens. Great team around me. What more do you need? Let's get the frog.
Schedule, happy days. And it wasn't too bad, aren't you? That's done. Nicely done. Like a professional. All went to plan. Um, yeah, harder than I thought, but came down fine. Uh, so we got about a kilometre swim now across Basin Point. Um, so just trying to keep my body temperature up. Um, but it's nice and still, really calm. Uh, just made things a bit easier. So we're going about a kilometre across to Bet Wife Up and then on to leg two. Um, on the skyline, see there's that sort of dip in the forest? There's a little gap, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're headed head for there basically. Okay. He's run over from uh, Bass and Sweet and he's just come over the top of Whiteless Pike. And we've seen him descending into the back with his support runners. And then he's going to come up over here with us and descend over into Crummock Water and do his second swim. I just need to swim quick and then leg two is done. Grisdale was awful, I felt horrendous. Fell behind with food and drink a bit. Great company, great chat. Time flew by really, more than six hours in. And it doesn't feel like I've been going that long. Carrying the weight is just relentless, but that's the spirit of the round, you've got to carry it. We last saw Alex in Crummock Water. He's just swum across, he's got out of the water and he's headed straight up Melbrek. Then he has to go straight up Red Pike. Along the way, he has to wash his wetsuit in Scalefell. Then he has to go straight across to High Style. Instead of having a nice path to go down, you're following a rocky trail down the mountain straight to Buttermere. 
I'm supporting Alex on three of the swims. So i am now just got to go and swim across. I'm gonna pick up Alex. I'm gonna swim back with him. He's got one leg left and then he's got the biggest swim. The toughest bit of that leg was, yeah, the descent down from the last rain right. Slippery rock, there was a bit of five points of contact. Um, yeah, that was the worst bit. I don't think he was enjoying that too much, but he was running well, actually. Oh, legend. I'm in the unknown now. I don't know how my body's gonna respond and just grateful to be out doing this again, you know? I'm just worried about the last swim. Really worried about that, but just take it a leg at a time, you know? Oh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Oh, yeah, me. Yeah, need a hot bath now. <laughs> <laughs>